Hey everyone, welcome to the next video from section 7.7. .7. So in this video we're talking about something a little bit different. We're talking about diagonalizable systems, and I'll define what that means in in the course of the video. Um, the idea being that if I have a matrix that's diagonal and I try to solve it, it's really, really easy to do. So if that's really easy, what if we can make things diagonal? And that's what we'll analyze in this video. So let's go ahead and just get on into it. So point one for this video. If A is diagonal, the system is really easy to solve. And I'm actually going to leave one for you guys to do at the end of the video for your problem is to solve a diagonal system. The idea is basically this. The idea is, so say I have y equals a, y prime equals a y, and a is diagonal. So I write this out, y1, y, let's do a 2 by 2. The, the idea is the same in higher dimensions. Lambda 1, 0, 0, lambda 2. This is what I mean by a diagonal, is that there are only entries on the main diagonal from top left to bottom right, and zeros everywhere else y1, y2. Well, what I can do with this is now I can try to write this out. If I multiply these matrices together, I get that this is lambda1, y1, lambda2, y2. So effectively, I now just have two equations. y1 prime equals lambda1, y1, and y2 prime equals lambda2, y2. Well, you know how to solve both of these. These are really easy. These are just first order linear ODEs, just one equation, not a system anymore, that you can solve. Solve those, solve it out, and we're good to go. You, get, you can just solution to the whole thing that way. So there's generally there's a physics term for this kind of thing. So in this case, we would say, we would say that y1 and y2 are decoupled. And by decouple, we mean they really don't depend on each other. They only depend on themselves, so we can solve them individually and then put them back together, because they are a decoupled, they're a separated system. If they were coupled, we have to solve it as a system, not as individual equations. So these are really easy to solve, and you'll do one in your worksheet, worksheet problem for this. So what if we could make a system diagonal? So if I could convert an arbitrary system, x prime equals ax, into a diagonal one, that would be fantastic. Why? Because if I can convert it, I can then solve the diagonalized one, and then back it up, and get my value x from that. Unfortunately, this is not always possible. But, it works whenever we don't have to do the generalized eigenvalue stuff. That is, when I have n eigenvectors. So how do we do this in this case? So we'll start with the matrix A and assume we have c1 c2 up through cn eigenvectors with r1 r2 rn corresponding eigenvalues which may be repeated right saying that i have full set of n eigenvalue vectors doesn't mean my eigenvalues aren't repeated, it just means for each one that is repeated I have a full set of eigenvectors. Right? This is the algebraic equals geometric multiplicity case that gave us the proper nodes in section 7.8. So what I want to do to do this, I'm going to make a new matrix. I'm going to make a matrix T, which is going to be all the eigenvectors stacked in a matrix. So I'm going to stack up C1, C2, Cn. Right? All of these are n element vectors, so if I stack them up this way, I get an n by n matrix. And I'm also going to give another matrix. I'm going to call a matrix D to be the matrix that has the R's along the diagonal in the same order as these vectors. So R1, R2, dot, 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 Rn, and zeros up here, zeros down here. So it is a diagonal matrix. The R's are on the diagonal, and there's zeros everywhere else. Now I want to calculate two products. I want to calculate A times T, and I want to calculate T times D. So what is A times T? Well, A times T, how do I compute matrix products? Well, I take rows of A, multiply them by columns of T, and stack those into a, a, a vector, basically. What, I, what it ends up doing is that in a matrix of this form, it ends up being A times C1 in the first column, A times C2 in the second column, up to A times Cn in the last column. But I assume these guys were all eigenvectors. And C1 is an eigenvector of eigenvalue R1. So this here is an R1 times C1, R2 times C2, and so on to 
R N C N. Now let's do the other product. T times D. Well now that is end up gonna end up being R1 times C1, R2, C2, on to R N C N. How does that work? Well that works out because basically when I take the, the first row of T, which is the first row of all these eigenvectors, and when I land the first column, I multiply by R1 for the first guy and nothing to the other guy. So I kill the other guy, I just get R1 times the first component of C1. If I step down to the second row, I'm just getting R1 times the second component of C1, and so on down the line. So I get this here, and these two things are equal, which then tells me that A T equals T times D, or since T is invertible, T inverse A T equals D. Now it looks like I just pulled some witchcraft there, but this this T inverse A T thing is called a similarity transformation. That word is not important, but it's in the book, so I'm going to say it once. And it turns A into a diagonal matrix, D. Turns A into D diagonal. Now, if this is possible, we say that A is diagonalizable. Otherwise, it is not. So the idea here is if I have a full set of eigenvectors for A, as in I have n eigenvectors, then A is diagonalizable, and I can do this using a matrix of the eigenvectors stacked up into a matrix. And we'll see in the next video how we can use this to help us solve problems when A is diagonalizable. All right, so that was my point for this video is diagonal systems are nice, and if we have a full set of eigenvectors, then we can make A a diagonal system. So I'm going to give you a problem to work on, which is just solving a diagonal system so you see what that looks like, and then we'll talk about this stuff in the next video. So here's the problem for you. So we talked about the beginning of the video, how you should handle this. You want to split it up into two equations and solve them both, and then find a way to put them back together. So I want you to find the general system for this guy and put that on your worksheet for tomorrow. All right, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next one.